It's the secret plot to kill Roosevelt, Stalin, and Churchill. I mean, what a setup. And by the way, is, is this your researcher or co-author? Josh Mensch, what a name. <laughs> I know. Only I can pick the name Mensch for the co-author. He's my co-author. He's incredible. And he and I love this story. It starts with this amazing moment where it's 1943, the height of World War II. And this all really happened. This mm -hmm. is where FDR is meeting Churchill and Stalin for the very first time. The big three are coming together to plan Normandy and figure out and get on the same page. It's vital for the war effort that they get together. And as FDR comes into Tehran, which is where the meeting is, because that's where Stalin right. demanded it be, everyone's waving at the motorcade. They're all excited to see the president of the United States is there. But the person inside the motorcade is not FDR. It's actually a Secret Service agent who's a decoy. The real FDR is in a beat up old sedan, ducked down and hiding on another part of the city, racing through the streets because they're worried that Nazis are going to kill him. I just ruined chapter one of the Nazi conspiracy, <laughs> but that's what, chap that, that's what chapter one is. And, and it opens with that question, you know, this really happened. Who's trying to kill FDR and why is he hiding at the height of World War II? But that's why books like this mean so much. You see the opening scene of a movie in your head, and that's what great books do. Nonfiction can be as as entertaining as fiction or a film or a great movement of music, as long as you can make the pictures move in your head and make the words move in, in, in your mind, you know, and become these images. That's what's so great about this. If you're a person who loves thrillers, who loves intrigue, this really happened, man. You can care about this so much deeper than complete fiction. What do you prefer to write? Yeah, you know, for me, a good story is a good story. And sometimes yeah. it's a kid's story. Sometimes it's a nonfiction story. Sometimes it's a fiction one. For me, as in any book, and any of us know, it's always about the character. So I love the fact that we know FDR, we know Winston Churchill, we know Stalin, we've heard their names. Mm -hmm. But I love that in this book, that we go down and meet these characters you've never heard of. To There's try a Nazi and develop, in the book. right, right. You gotta, you gotta develop these characters and, and, and they're real. Even though I say the word character, they're real people. There's a Nazi in there named Otto Skorzeny, who I was mm. obsessed with. He's the guy, Hitler invites him to his private headquarters, the Wolf Slayer. And Hitler had brought together all of his special operations guys to find who the fiercest one was. This, again, it's all true. They're all lined up in a big room, shoulder to shoulder. And Hitler asked him this question, what do you think of Italy? And they all start, of course, you know, saying, oh, Italy is our ally and we fight on their side. And Otto scores any gambles and he blurts out in front of everybody, I am from Austria, my Fuhrer. And what he's gambling on is he knows Hitler is from Austria. And if you're really from Austria, you resent Italy because Italy during World War I took a piece of Austria mm -hmm. and never gave it back. And Adolf okay. Hitler looks over at Otto Skorzeny and is like, you're my guy. And Rachel, when you see the scene, Adolf Hitler puts Otto on this secret plot, on a secret mission, that when you see it in the book, I told the editor, we need to put a real photograph of Otto Skorzeny right. in the book because no one will believe it if they don't see it. And you see that picture in the book. It's the wildest, most amazing Nazi story you've never heard in your life. And that to me is when I'm like, this is the story I have to tell today. And there's so much in it that the world has no idea about. And it's so fascinating and really a page turner. <laughs>